98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome to the Ask Brian Show. The following is paid programming and does not necessarily reflect the opinions of KHS or its ownership. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're listening to the Ask Brian radio show, A-S-K-B-R-I-E-N, because the only way to spell Brian is with an E. Anyone who attempts to spell it with a Y-A-N or I-A-N doesn't know how to spell Brian. Ask Brian, A-S-K-B-R-I-E-N. You're listening to the Ask Brian radio show. It's affiliated with the AskBrian.com web network. What is the Ask Brian web network? Well, the Ask Brian web network is basically a place where any business owner can learn about business and get their business problems solved. We have a question and answer section whereby people can ask a business community. A dry cleaner in Florida can ask a dry cleaner in North Carolina, how do I handle this situation? While the laws are different from state to state, there are many consumer problems that happen exactly the same same way. And the other thing is you have the option if you become to become an expert. And you can ask an expert a question. When you're asking an expert a question, then you can get a better answer. You have to apply to become an answer and uh, to become an expert, excuse me. An expert then is allowed to have their own profile page. With their own profile page, they're allowed to post their own blogs, their own videos, their own ebooks, and most importantly, schedule their webinars on our master webinar calendar, which allows you to have your own webinar station, potentially, and or webinar public broadcasting, whereby you can actually have your webinars posted and have our users or any other user schedule on their own Google calendars the ability to have and listen to your webinar. Any way to solve a business problem. Normally, we have our guest, Lindsay Man, but she is unavailable today, out on assignment again. Yes, she is out investigating, finding out the best, so we will sorely miss her. We also have our co-host, Mr. Uh, You will now be placed into the conference. uh, (laughs) It's Grossman. And is Alex, are you there? Mr. Brian Johnson, how are you doing today? I got to tell you, I've never had such a clear, concise uh, ability to listen to you. Normally, when I'm listening online, uh, I usually have all the static, all these problems, so I'm great to have you. I I understand you're traveling, so uh, not only do I missing Miss Lindsay Mann, and I'm crying, but I'm also missing my co-host, Alex Grossman, but he was able to make it, and I'm very grateful. Hopefully, he can be on for the whole show. We'll see, Uh, but... I'm glad to have Alex. Now, we have our guest. Uh, our guest is Mr. John Trainer. John, are you there? <laughs> Great to have you on our show. Now, Alex, you may be unaware of this because you weren't on in the beginning, but John Trainer, I believe, was our first guest. That was back in January of 2017. I mean, back then... The Pony Express was still around. Back then, they were saying Amazon who? Well, not that, but it was a while ago. And it's been a great road. We've actually done, I calculated out, we've done 118 shows. So this is 119. Episode 119, ask Brian, A-S-K, B-R-I-E-N, dot, 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 com. Okay. So, John, uh, so the people that did not know you initially and have, hadn't listened to the, all 119 episodes. And for those people, I'll, you know, they're going to they're gonna start to learn about how important it is to listen to our show, but they don't have a background that I have a background. So let's quickly go over your background, uh, your business background. You've been around for a few years. You've done quite a few accomplishments. Uh, my recollection, and forgive me if I'm wrong, something to do with microwave popcorn in Mexico. How, how, what was that all about? Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a good memory. That was a long time ago. Uh, I, In a I galaxy heard, far, far away. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and what an honor, actually. I didn't remember I was the first host, so 
So thank you for having me. 119, it's been a long ride. Congratulations. Um, about my career popcorn, well, um, many, many months ago, I, I had the privilege to, to represent an American brand in Mexico. I am originally from Mexico and uh, launched my career popcorn in Mexico City and then from there expanded nationally. And it was an interesting ride. And it's been a long time because now I'm in technology. So, <laughs> but good, good recollection. Well, that, that, that is a technology. Wasn't microwaves a technology? I mean, way back when. Um, so prior to that, if I, want, if I was in uh, Mexico and I wanted to get microwave popcorn before you came around, what did I do? Go to get Jiffy Pop? Uh, you would actually do the popcorn in the, you know, the traditional way. You put it in the stove or you come to the movie theater and got it there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, interesting. It was, a, it's a, it was a good innovation at the time. Uh, back in the 80s, late 80s, um, we learned, you know, in business, you learn a lot, and we, we, we went and we got the exclusive representation of this tough brand, and we started launching, and then we realized in supermarkets that that uh, there were very few microwave ovens in the market. <laughs> <laughs> so we you know, talked about pivoting, and uh, quickly we, we, we started, we launched uh, a line of very cheap, microwave popcorn, I mean microwave ovens that we put side and side on the shelf and, and that started to sell very, very well and we, we started out selling like one truckload of popcorn about every month or month and a half and we ended up selling lots, lot of, a lot more like maybe, I don't remember exactly but it was like 10 or 15 truckloads per month. It, it, was, a, it was a very good success story uh, but again, it's been a long time. And you were, you were how old when you started this? I was 18. 18. Well, that's very old. I mean, you know, by 18, you should have had four or five businesses by then, the typical entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and now, 18 years old, you're bringing microwave popcorn to Mexico, and you have to figure out a way how to get it into, into the markets and the chains. That's got to be a real, uh, you know, tough nut to crack. I mean, today, I would think it'd be tough to get you know, a product or anything into a store. And, and, and if you have zero, zero background in it, uh, you know, how, how did you even try to do that in the beginning? Then we're going to go right into the rest of the technology part, but I just want to get our viewers a little history here. Well, you know what? At that age, I think, uh, uh, to steal from a, a, a line on a movie, ignorance that lives. <laughs> we didn't know what we were getting into. <laughs> you didn't, age, you you didn't know you possible. couldn't do it, so you won, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And, and it's a good lesson in business because sometimes you just have to try and hard and then, you know, and pivot and, and, and find the best angle and go for it. Um, sometimes you just need great idea, a good team, and, 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 and a lot of hours to put up behind it, and most businesses work that way. And, and so you are 18 when you started, and when did you get out of that business? Uh, we sold that business in four years later, 22, 23. Um, about four and a half years into it. Uh, there was a, a very wise businessman, a lot older than us, that saw that there were a bunch of kids uh, that had hidden uh, an interesting concept, and he bought the company from us. And, and uh, it, was a, it was a good ride for, for a very well it last. That, that's a pretty good deal to be 18 to start a business, 22, and you're out of the business. I mean, most people going to college for those four years. You're starting a business. So that, that's a pretty interesting concept about what your contemporaries are doing at the time. Um, and then... Now you currently have a business that's called, uh, forgive me if I'm wrong, Creativa Inc. Is that correct? Creativa? Or am I Creativa, yes. Yeah. Okay. No, your friend is Creativa. It's in Spanish, but yeah, Creativa. And, and, and what does that business do? That's your current business, correct? Well, yeah, that's my current business. And, and after the popcorn business, I, I uh, let me just start back a little bit. Then. Uh, I wanted to go into marketing and I uh, had an opportunity to work for Johnson & Johnson for a while. In Very small the company, yeah. Food sectors. Yeah, learned a lot there. Then I launched an advertising agency. Um, that agency was in Mexico still. Um, then opened up a, 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 a division in Chicago. That company grew quite a bit. We had offices in Chicago, Houston, Miami, L.A., um, and in 2007, uh, sold that company. We specialized in, in direct response, print. We had partnerships with, with large uh, companies. And, uh, and I, I, I really, my passion has always been marketing. 
And uh, I saw the uh, industry changing rapidly with, with everything that had to do with digital. And uh, my business was slowly headed in a direction that was very focused on traditional uh, media. So, again, I had an opportunity to sell it. I sold it. Um, and I joined a, a very large company in the turnaround. I worked as an executive for, for Tribune, um, launched the, uh, actually worked in the Hispanic vertical, um, and uh, did a lot of innovations there within a, 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 a large traditional media company trying to reinvent itself to, to, to build on the digital age. Um, and I think that's when we met, actually. I was um, as an executive of that company, um, looking at all sorts of innovations, trying to figure out uh, what to buy, what to invest. Uh, it was it was interesting to be part of a large company uh, that had the total P and L that, that that needed to transform itself because obviously the newspaper industry was was not going to be the same in the future as it was or has been in the past. Um, then in 2015. I decided to go back into entrepreneurship again. I, 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 didn't, I didn't want to really do an advertising agency like Lifetime because uh, traditional marketing, in my opinion, is dead. It's changed completely. And I wanted to be ahead of the game, trying to be more uh, helping companies on, through the digital transformation from everything that I had learned at the, at, at the Tribune. Um, and, and so I launched Creativa to help companies, primarily small businesses, to uh, transform their operations to find efficiencies either with internal softwares that integrate processes and help you become more profitable, or creating apps and websites and e-commerce applications and everything that has to do to help you market your business better. Um, and, and it's been an interesting ride. I've been doing this for almost four years now. Uh, learned a lot. The digital world changes so fast, and, and it's, it's, it's a very dynamic, it's very creative. Uh, it's great. I love it. It's out of everything that I've done in my career, I'm having the most fun right now. Well, that's always important. If you're having fun, it's a lot easier to go to work, right? You, when it's when it's just fun, you don't have to worry about it. When it's work, it's work. Uh, I find an interesting concept here. I see you start a business, you sell it, and then you go work for a big company. You start a business, you sell it. And actually, by the way, I think you selling that bit, that digital business in 2006, 2007, I think that was probably the best thing you know, you've done. Why? Because you, you were able to see that everything was going digital. That was a time, I think, when there was a kind of pivot in the market from print to digital. Had, 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 I mean, it was going along the way for the last 10 years prior to that, but by then it was starting to go away. I mean, when I started my career... As a lawyer, I was advertising in the yellow pages because that's what you had to do, and you had to get the front. Now, by 2004, 2005, it was Internet only, basically. You were not getting any money off of the yellow pages. You were going onto the Internet. So the fact that you were able to see that by 2007 and sell, I think that was very smart. I think if you waited five years, the valuation of that company could have gone down quite a bit. So I think you, you definitely did what you're supposed to do, which is sell high. Uh, uh, so I think that was great. But it's interesting, you always go back to the big company right after you go from the startup. So it's kind of like you go through the startup, you love that concept, and then it's like I need a break and I want to be with a company that has a huge budget that can help me out and grow it and I don't have to worry about all these little tiny issues. And then you go, you work there for a while, and then after that you go like, hey, I can't deal with this big company stuff, so I need to go back to the that back to that. that that's a very interesting story. That was interesting. And actually, now, now that you mention it, it's interesting because large companies at certain times need people that are very entrepreneurial and innovative, right. and at other times they, they don't. So it also had to be, I, I guess I was lucky to write specifically those two waves, and they needed very entrepreneurial mindsets to transform the way that they did business. So that, that, was, that was also very, very uh, lucky because not, you're not always... Um, you know, you, you might want to work in your company, but sometimes the opportunities don't, don't present themselves. So I guess it was it's just a combination. Alex, you had a couple questions? Yeah, I was just going to say, John, it's a very interesting career and a great, great story, I'll tell you. And, I, you know, I, my, my career mirrors that to a certain extent in the large company, entrepreneur, large company. Uh, you know, for me, it was always um, uh, getting getting the name out there and the large company 
comes and they, they want you because of what you've done so you can revolutionize what they do, which I'm sure your, your, your experience was the same. And then, you know, you learn a little bit of how to spend other people's money in the large companies, learn how to do it more efficiently and do it yourself. So I think that's really interesting. But I'm also extremely interested in your new, your new venture and, and how you were able to look at the opportunity and say, well, where was the opportunity to make people more efficient in a digital age? And, and I, I kind of get the idea it was more about the operations efficiency um, and, and being able to have them use different technologies. And there's a lot of that around also helping people with, you know, you, you have a term called nearshoring there. Maybe you could explain that a little and how that works. Sure, absolutely. Um, let me start just by saying one thing. Marketing uh, today, and it kind of just is a premise to why I'm doing what I'm doing. I read an article somewhere that said that about 80% of people don't believe marketing today. 80%. Uh, almost no one remembers when was the last time they purchased something because they saw an ad. That is dramatic for an advertising industry. Um, most customers reject marketing messages. Um, a lot of businesses are paralyzed by, by the new technology and everything that happened, especially small businesses. It's like, now what? I need to update my what? And what? <laughs> it's very complex to you try to run a business, and then your old ways of doing marketing has changed completely. So how do you connect a, a consumer uh, with your product when most of them are not going to believe you? So you have to leverage the, everything that's new. So uh, social media marketing now, it's, 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 it's incredibly big because, you can target specifically to the people, to the sub-segments that you really want to talk to, and then you can do a A-B testing to the end uh, because you can do six, seven, eight different segments. You can do three or four different uh, and, uh, messages to, to test, you know, all those six, seven messages, and then, and then uh, do A-B testing to see what works and then improve it so that then you can start getting your ROI increase and, and, and then uh, it's... It, there's, there's a result, and so I, I'm kind of following, but I'm very excited about this company. There is an analysis that was published recently in Fortune, I think it was Fortune, that said that companies that invest 10% of their media budget uh, back into that data analytics outperform their marketing plans by 25%. So investing in data and, and how it best reaches consumers pays by itself, and it's, it, this industry is, is growing uh, significantly. Um, it's estimated that by 2025, the media and data analytics market is going to be about $10 billion industry. Uh, and that's the industry we're playing. That's my ultimate goal is to help companies uh, navigate to this complex uh, space of data. But we have to do all sorts of other businesses that helps our companies get there because what we found is that kind of what happened with the micro popcorn and the popcorn, uh, I mean, the micro evolve and, and the popcorn, uh, we're seeing that the market's already there, but not everybody's ready to maximize that opportunity. So we start by analyzing what is the digital footprint of the, of the, of the customer, how ready they are to start doing e-commerce, um, how do they capture all the data? We look at their CRM. We look at uh, how 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 they're treating uh, all the loyalty programs that they have going, um, and then we start little by little helping them do Google like following, finding the right audience, testing. We put content before them, and so that that's that's the process. I mean, and part of the process of that is building apps, building the website, um, helping them create their their social media page, etc. And through that process, and as an entrepreneur, I saw a very specific need in which most companies wanted to be able to do that afford and afford it. So I set up shop in, a, in, in Mexico to have a team of developers that can work with companies to build apps, to build websites, to, 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 to analyze the data, to crunch numbers, um, uh, kind of like a pack room operation. So that's, that's what Yadiva does. Um, 
the near shore stuff and the on the marketing, all the digital marketing stuff. John, we're going to be right back. We got to take a break, and then we're going to come right back. Really good. Hometown KHTS breaking news. KHTS is following a breaking news story this afternoon. Earlier this hour, we received initial reports of heavy police activity around Avenue Stanford and Rye Canyon Road. KHTS News was able to confirm earlier this hour that there was a deputy involved shooting in the area. One suspect was shot. Zero deputies were hit. A containment has been established around the surrounding area while deputies investigate the incident. As of 1 p.m. Thursday afternoon, Rye Canyon near Avenue Stanford is shut down, according to officials. This is a breaking news story. We'll continue to monitor the situation and provide updates as more information becomes available. So keep it tuned here to KHTS. Follow along with us on HometownStation.com and across social media at KHTS Radio. 98.1 98.1 FM and AM 1220. So much going on this year. Be on the lookout for amazing events happening throughout the year, including the Cowboy Festival, concerts in the park, Thursdays at Newhall, and the Santa Clarita Marathon. There are also a number of fun activities and things to do year-round, including outdoor recreation, hiking and bike trails, adult classes, art exhibits, youth sports programs, and more. You can even sign up to be a volunteer. Learn more at santa-clarita.com. Experience luxury senior living at Oakmonta Valencia, Oakmont's brand new community in Santa Clarita. At Oakmonta Valencia, residents will enjoy five star amenities, including state of the art movie theaters, spacious custom built apartment homes, and sweeping views of the valley, all close to shopping, restaurants, and medical centers. Enjoy resort style living, professional concierge services, a luxurious salon and day spa, and world class dining. At Oakmonta Valencia, you'll embrace retirement in style. For details, visit oakmontavalencia.com. Set your kids' creativity with a new twist on fun, Painting with a Twist, where professional artists guide your child during each painting party to create a finished work of art they can proudly hang at home or give to a loved one. Private parties, birthday parties, Friday night tea night, kids camp, daily events all summer. Visit paintingwithatwist.com under new ownership on Golden Valley in Santa Clarita near Target. Painting with a Twist is your party destination for kids of all ages. Worried about paying for college? College of the Canyons is having a free financial aid workshop called Cash for College. Whether you are bound for a community college, for your university, or private college, whether you are a student or a parent, this workshop is for you. Come to College of the Canyons Cash for College Workshop, Tuesday, September 24th at 6.30 p.m. in the Santa Clarita Performing Arts Center at College of the Canyons. Visit canyons.edu forward slash money for college. That's canyons.edu forward slash money, the number four, college. If you have a business problem, if someone doesn't honor their agreement and you need an aggressive attorney with over 27 years experience, the law office of Peter Bronstein has helped partners resolve disputes, franchisees resolve disputes, and other business owners who have a challenge. Let the law office of Peter Bronstein take your stress away. Visit LACorporateAttorney.com. Don't wait too long and lose your rights. Solve your business challenge problem today. Visit LACorporateAttorney.com. Hometown KHTS breaking news. KHTS is following a breaking news story this afternoon. Earlier this hour, we received initial reports of heavy police activity around Avenue Stanford and Rye Canyon Road. KHTS News was able to confirm earlier this hour that there was a deputy involved shooting in the area. One suspect was shot, zero deputies were hit. A containment has been established around the surrounding area while deputies investigate the incident. As of 1 p.m. Thursday afternoon, Rye Canyon near Avenue Stanford is shut down, according to officials. This is a breaking news story. We'll continue to monitor the situation and provide updates as more information becomes available. So keep it tuned here to KHTS. Follow along with us on HometownStation.com and across social media at KHTS Radio. Hometown, your hometown station. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I guess we're back. Ask Brian Radio Show, A-S-K-B-R-I-E-N, with my co-host Alex Grossman and our guest John Trainer. So, 
We were talking right before the break. Uh, you had mentioned earlier, John, something about the fact that ten uh, percent of the media uh, um, uh, can be outperform. You can outperform by twenty five percent based on good data analytics. Well, I mean, most people are familiar with Google Analytics. Uh, they may even be uh, know about uh, analytics through Facebooks, whatever, but they don't know what you're referring to. So how can you outperform on 25% uh, by analytics? What, what analytics are you talking about? Is there software that you can use? And how could somebody do that so they can help their business grow? Okay. Oh, that's an excellent question. Let me walk you through maybe an example. So let, let's assume we're working with, uh, actually, let us assume I'm going to talk about a, a project that we're doing. Um, we have a specific client. We help them build a landing page. Uh, the landing page uh, is, is where the call to action is to purchase their product or, or, or engage with it in any way. It, it, it's regularly to drive sales. It, it's, it's an e-book publisher, so they want to sell more. So in this particular case, what we do is we... We see uh, ads in all sorts of media, social media. So first, we, 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 we took us a couple of months to completely analyze their audience. And then we identified six segments in particular. Uh, you know the 80-20 rule? There was 20% of people that were generating 80% of the dialogue online. Uh, we, we looked at, at conversations in Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, we analyze for this particular customer, obviously doing, uh, 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 it's, it's on my machine, so just with analysts doing it, but we analyzed about 3 million conversations online, and then we determined based on what we engage, they were engaging with, uh, what sorts of content resonated better with this segment. So then we started placing ads that, that we thought that would appeal best to this particular segment. And then there were three or four different versions of those ads. And then we started pixeling the ads to see once they engage with it. First, analytic that's, you know, open rate, you know, if they saw it, if they didn't, if they shared it, if they commented. Those, those basic analytics. But then when they actually went and clicked through and went ended up in the site and they actually purchased the product, we, we can track if they came to Facebook, if they came to Twitter, if they came to Instagram. If they can do this video that we, that we see that also there, and, and, and then we can see based on who's clicking what, we can then optimize the campaign on, and that's, that, that's the process that happens every day. And say, you know, reduce your Instagram uh, budget by 10% and increase that in Facebook because that's working better for this particular group. But for another group in particular, it's going to be the opposite. And then you forget, completely forget this other segment that's not responding to that, so then the scrap and then just create another type of content that will work probably better with that. And that's by managing that, you're optimizing on the go what works better every day, and we're tweaking the app so that the performance gets better. And that is how you are performing competition. Is that on an automated system? Because I would think that labor hours would take way too much time to go through that. So is that automated? We created an AI-powered uh, a process in which part of the process is the, the interface is, is uh, it's machines interpreting the data. Um, and then there's analysts and we have people who are a lot smarter than me that are math majors that, that crunch the numbers and come up with the recommendations. But the, the, the kind of lifting is done by AI. And is this a system whereby every day and every hour it's being done or is this like you're just going to do the analytics every two or three weeks because you may find out in the beginning that, you know what, Instagram was 80% and 20% was uh, was Facebook, and then all of a sudden something happens, you don't know why, and even though you changed the budget and did everything, now you find out it's working in reverse. I mean, is that possible? Uh, yes, it is. And actually, our, our business methodology uh, is – we help do the heavy lifting. We do the whole process. We segment the market. Then we create a dashboard, and, and that dashboord um, is, is accessed by the customer. And over time, we actually transition over. We train the customer to do it themselves, and then we transition over the media by to them. And we just teach them how to interpret the data from this dashboard, and then it's ongoing. So the whole heavy lifting happens. It's about 
couple of month project depending on how many uh, conversations are out there about your particular categories. And, but then the customer stays with it. We, we learned that in small businesses, um, they they are very good. They know their, their angle. They know their market. They know who the customer is. Well, that, that's a very interesting concept. Because was, m- m- most business owners, okay, in, in a position of yourself, would not want to give it off to the business owner to let them work on it and train them to, so that they know how to do it themselves. They would want to keep going because then they've got a lifelong customer. And it's interesting that you have taken that approach. Not every business would do that. Um, well, well it does, it's a difference for valuation. Um, we are we are becoming a SaaS platform and not a service platform. So we want to train the customer to do it themselves because they're interacting with our SaaS product. So that's the difference. Our, 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 our valuation is a lot bigger than that, and that's that's it, it goes in line with our, with our, with our so we're- Operations. So, are you charging them a subscription service or selling that software product to them? How how are you working that on the ongoing basis? We 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 have a setup cost that depends on how big is the market. So, if there's like if we need to analyze five million conversations in one price, if it's one million, it's another, and it's we 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 get to that number by analyzing each piece. Uh, we, we we do not have a different setup the interface. Uh, and then there's a handoff process in the body. It takes about a month. So within three months, the customer then is running themselves. And then it's just a maintenance fee to keep the, uh, the dashboard going. And and then uh, in the meetups, they call us, and then we help them with more consulting. But, but that, that's, how, how, that's how the model works. And do you, for your own advertising, for you to get customers, do you, is it a word-of-mouth thing that you do? Do you do your own advertising for acquisition? How do you go about that? Being a company that helps other people get get customers. You know, it's it's very interesting, but I haven't had the need to advertise. Um, a, a lot of customers refer me to other customers, and I started out calling, uh, you know, old colleagues and former clients, and uh, we we haven't. <laughs> uh, we will. That's part of the the strategy now moving forward, but. Um, I think we hit a, a very specific market that there's a huge need, and and the word of mouth has, has kept us so busy that that we're growing very very fast. So I, I really put the brakes on, on advertising on ourselves because we need to get everything in place before we can exponentially grow. But we're we're right back at that stage. And you've been doing this since since for how many years? About two and a half years. That's pretty incredible that you've been able to grow your business for two and a half years without having to get to advertising. That really is incredible. Yeah, thank you. And it's been a long, a long work, so a lot of work. So, um, do you have any ability to help people that are just starting out? So, if let's say you know one of our uh, listeners just started a business, they're launching it, uh, they don't even have a funnel set up or anything. Uh, it sounds to me like you're only really going after people that have already been in business for a while that have, you know, many, many customers, whatever. Can you help out startups that have just at the beginning stage? Yes, of course. Um, most most startups at the beginning stage don't have a budget to get us to get started with the setup and the analysis. Uh, it's, it's, it's not cost prohibitive, but it's, 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 a, it's an investment. Um, but it's not major. It, we, we work with small customers, so the small business space. Um, but yes, we, we do work actually with a lot of startups. Interestingly enough, uh, because of what we do, uh, I actually help startups in exchange of equity at the time. So now I have like 20 different companies <laughs> that I part owner with because I either help them uh, start. Uh, you know, build their their interface, or, or we're hosting them, and we're helping them one way or another. So yeah, uh, we do help. We we do work with startups. Yeah, well, we know one of the first rules in business as you get started is you have to invest money to make money, and investing in a pipeline is is important. I think that you know, like you say, they have to have an audience. You're going to know their audience to do the analytics. But realistically, you're building your pipeline constantly, so I can see the value in what you're offering to uh, to a number of people, whether they're you know they're extremely well established, maybe moving into a like some of our audience is brick and mortar, and they're moving into a more say digital age, or someone who's at that point of their business where 
they've grown it organically as far as they can go. And I think that's where a lot of people make a mistake. They get into this organic growth, and they think it's going to keep going, and then it stalls. And so services like yours can really, uh, you know, pump that up, right? Right, right, right. Now, um, your services are, are not just SaaS, though, right? Don't you offer other digital uh, agency concepts such as website development uh, and, and along those lines, or, or do you just do basically data analysis? Well, what happens is once once we are talking to a customer about the you know the, the data analytics and digital marketing process, they normally want to accomplish things that their current infrastructure is not capable of handling. So sometimes they have a website that is old; uh, they, they 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 cannot have like e-commerce on it, or uh, their social media presence is very uh, bad. Uh, or, or non-existent, and, and then why why go and do all that work when you're not ready? So what we do is we help them transform their business, and sometimes we end up creating software internally to help them run the business better because some, some customers, like, run out of inventory and they didn't order in time, uh, and, and so we, we, we get involved and we apply technology to help them run their business better if they need it, and that's kind of like, on a per needed basis, what we do with customers is, because of all my experience as an, as an entrepreneur, is uh, we try to help out as much as we can in every section that we can, and we facilitate very competitive pricing for, for setting up your website and setting up the e-commerce uh, application for the website, and we need an app, we build an app, and, and, and that has kind of taken us to, to different directions as well um, with customers that have had different needs. And what percentage of your clients are from the United States? About 80%. About 80%. And uh, do you have an office in the United States? or? Yes, in Chicago. In Chicago. We're, 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 we're headquartered in Chicago. I'm, I'm half the time in Chicago. I'm half the time in Chicago. And um, so currently... These these comp- companies that you have an equity interest in, are you taking on new companies, or is the companies that you have that you have a, uh, an equity interest in that you've done some work for in the past? Is that is that uh, maxed out, or are you still taking on new ones? No, of course. If there's if there's like like any investor, uh, we're investing time, resources, energy. Uh, we 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 get involved in the right ones, so we we might see you know several, but we we end up with with one, let's say, when, when you do it, there's a lot of potential. So that's, that's kind of how it works. Um, and now, I, do you own the company 100% or do you own with you have other partners and shareholders? I have other partners. Um, so if you one, if you see an opportunity, is it you that are, are, are seeing the opportunity and uh, the company is actually the the equity holder uh, in these startups that you're taking equity in, or are you personally taking equity? Uh, that's a conversation that we normally have with the, with the partners, and sometimes I do personally, sometimes they do personally because they believe in a concept that I didn't, or vice versa. So yeah, we do both actually. And of these companies that you've been taking an interest in since 2015, what is the most successful one? Um, one, I'm a very silent partner in a platform that does that is the integrated uh, an education eco- ecosystem. So they they put all the school curriculum into into a tablet and and created a whole ecosystem that helps them in education. And that business is going very very well. I have I have a very very tiny piece of of of, of their huge success, and I feel blessed with that. Uh, Many others have failed um, um, for one reason or another. Most of them run out of gas. Uh, they, you know, an entrepreneur has limited resources and limited time, and 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 sometimes either they couldn't spend the time on it, or or they ran out of, of, of money. And, and some of them are just there, which is unfortunate. Uh, but it happens. It's it's that's the thing with startups. I think that. One out of every nine or ten is the one that that, that work. So you, that's why we 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 only you know help in that way startups in, in, in very very strategically because the uh, the fail rate is very high. 
I would imagine the fail rate is very high, but I also imagine when you do have a success, it can be uh, predict- unpredictable and could go, you know, crazy potentially. Potentially. If, if you know of one like that, just let me know. Uh, uh, I'll you know send you all the uniforms I'm aware of. Yeah, <laughs> we all want one of those, right? <laughs> <laughs> Crystal ball and, and uh, happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, but you know, uh, you know. Now, what do you think is the most important trait of an entrepreneur? Attitude. Um, I think an entrepreneur has to uh, have a thick skin because you fail a lot. Um, sometimes you want to give up and you know throw everything out the window because you 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 you, know, you just can't handle uh, rejection that much. But you just have to keep going and believing your dream and, and you're you know following the right path. Do it. So, sometimes sometimes also you need to re, you know recognize that 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 you know uh, learn from the mistakes and you know do something else because that happens too. Um, but I think it's the attitude. People can learn, but you cannot change their attitude. That, that, that's interesting. I would have thought so you would have said something about persistence, or you know, make sure you you know confront whatever you're starting. I didn't think that attitude uh, would be the number one category, but that's an interesting concept. We're going to be taking a break, and we're going to be right back with John Trainer. Hometown KHTS breaking news. KHTS is following a breaking news story this afternoon. Earlier this hour, we received initial reports of heavy police activity around Avenue Stanford and Rye Canyon Road. KHTS News was able to confirm earlier this hour that there was a deputy involved shooting in the area. One suspect was shot, zero deputies were hit. A containment has been established around the surrounding area while deputies investigate the incident. As of 1 p.m. Thursday afternoon, Rye Canyon near Avenue Stanford is shut down, according to officials. Also, access to Rye Canyon Road via the northbound side of the old road is restricted until at least 7 p.m. this evening. This is a breaking news story. We will continue to provide updates as more information becomes available. So keep it tuned here to KHTS. Go to hometownstation.com and follow along with us on social media at KHTS Radio. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. When your child learns who they are, they can take on anything that life throws their way. That's the focus of Isla de Agua Dulce, a tuition-free charter school just off the 14 freeway in the East Santa Clarita Valley. We believe in learning through cooperation, creativity, and emotional growth. Our rapidly expanding TK-8 through campus places self-discovery at the core of every experience, from an outdoor science lab to our greenhouse and technology-rich exploratorium. For enrollment information, including grade 7 enrollment starting this fall and homeschool options, visit iLeadAguadulce.org. Coming to the canyon, Santa Clarita, Black Flag, Blue Oyster Cult, Puddle of Mud, Former Queens Reich leader Jeff Tate, Scott Staff of Creed, The Motels, Brian Howe of Bad Company, Lita Ford, Doc In, Rat, Molly Hatchet, Sir Mix-A-Lot, plus former members of Oingo Boingo, Halloween Party, and much more. Borderline Country Nights every Thursday, Salsa every Monday, and the canyon is the perfect place to host special events, so call 818-661-7237 and book your holiday party today. The Canyon, Santa Clarita, where music meets the soul. Tickets available through Ticketmaster. This is Greg from Consumers Furniture Gallery. For the past 41 years, we pride ourselves on offering quality name brand furniture at unbeatable prices. We carry a huge selection of dining and bedroom furniture in the latest styles and designs. We also have the largest selection of sofas and sectionals in the Santa Clarita Valley. You can choose your style, fabrics, leathers, and colors, or have one of our experts design it for you. Our mattress gallery features over 50 beds featuring Diamond and Serta. Consumers Furniture is located in the Centerpoint Shopping Center below Sam's Club in Walmart. We all know sometimes people lose their way. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, the Way Out Recovery SEV may have the answers you've been waiting for. The Way Out is the premier intensive outpatient treatment center serving Santa Clarita. Asking for help is the first step. Call the Way Out today, 661-296-4444. That's 296-4444 for a private free assessment. The Way Out is an accredited affordable outpatient program that accepts most insurance. Call us at 661-296-4444 or check us out online at thewayoutrecoveryscv.com. Quit battling with yourself. Ask The Way Out for help today. 
It's no wonder people love Baskin Robbins. 31 delicious flavors of ice cream. Celebrate with your favorite ice cream served any way you want, including the special flavor of the month. Baskin Robbins, now open on Lions Avenue in Newhall under new Santa Clarita family ownership, is the first Southern California hybrid design store for Baskin Robbins and the oldest location in Santa Clarita over 45 years. America's favorite neighborhood ice cream shop is just one scoop away. Baskin Robbins, the perfect dessert for your next celebration. Hometown. KHTS breaking news. KHTS is following a breaking news story this afternoon. Earlier this hour, we received initial reports of heavy police activity around Avenue Stanford and Rye Canyon Road. KHTS News was able to confirm earlier this hour that there was a deputy-involved shooting in the area. One suspect was shot. Zero deputies were hit. A containment has been established around the surrounding area while deputies investigate the incident. As of 1 p.m. Thursday afternoon, Rye Canyon near Avenue Stanford is shut down, according to officials. Also, access to Rye Canyon Road via the northbound side of the old road is restricted until at least 7 p.m. this evening. This is a breaking news story. We will continue to provide updates as more information becomes available. So keep it tuned here to KHTS. Go to hometownstation.com and follow along with us on social media at KHTS Radio. It's like no other station I've ever listened to. It's great. Your, your hometown station. Welcome back. They don't like that. Okay. We're back on KHDS 1220 and 98.1 FM. It's been a while since I said that, so I figured I owe it to you. Anyway, we're here with Alex Grossman and John Trainer. Are you there, guys? Yes. All right. I want to make. I want to make sure you haven't lost yet. Now. We were discussing a whole bunch of stuff, John. I'm so glad to have you on our show. You have a wealth of knowledge and uh, very detailed information as well. Um, wanted to go over a couple of things. So if somebody wanted to reach out to you and find out about your services, they would go out to creativa, K-R-E-A-T-I-V-A-I-N-C.com, and they would go to, is there a contact us page or something, or how would they reach you? Yeah, just click on contact us. So there's a chat up there as well. Uh, yeah, we're, we're, that's, the, that's the best way to find us. All right. Now, some of my listeners have been asking me on the phone while we were away, and they wanted to know, hey, this sounds great. How would I – I think I have a great idea, and I'm starting out my company, and I've got – my website You know, is, is being worked on right now, and I want to get something going. And I'd like to see if John would have an interest in – you know, getting a, a you know a half a point or one point or something or a couple points in my business. How would I go about that? So, what, is, what would be the process for somebody to do that? Contact me. Uh, let's schedule us a quick call. We can do a Zoom video call wherever you are. We'll just connect face to face in uh, here. And uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your ideas, of course. And is there any criteria that you look for? Um. If you're disrupting something, uh, that's key. Like, if, what are you disrupting? What problem you're solving that you think that you can do better with technology than, than any or anything else in the traditional space? I think those those are the best ideas. And traditional space, you mean by what? Well, traditional space could be like I'm, I'm talking to a guy. Oh, I'm not going to give up this idea. Now, but sorry, let me change. <laughs> <laughs> you have a very specific business, you know, it's very traditional storefront, and just converting that into into a new commerce. But he has he has a very specific angle because he can get product cheaper than everybody else, and he can he thinks he can compete better. So that that's that the sort of thing we can we can we can talk about. Like, what what is your competitive edge? And uh, if, if you have an idea that is exponentially better that than whatever is out there, um, uh, I'd love to hear about that. Okay, and um, the the last question, well, a- Alex, you said you had a question. No, I think you answered it. Thank you, Brian. 
the, the question was, how can I get through a TSA line without having the free TSA pass? That was your question. But anyway, we're back. Um, John, now your background, um, I don't know, everybody doesn't know this. I remember this because I have a pretty good memory. You went to a, a small little t- school in Chicago called uh, Northwestern. Did you go to the Kellogg School of Management? Is that where you went? Yes, yes, absolutely. Some months ago, yeah, I graduated in 2004 uh, of my MBA there. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was great. Had a great experience. And, Loved it. and, and, and um, so you're no longer working for any any specific company? Is it only Creativa, or do you work for other companies? Because I know you said you have equity interests, so obviously that's got to take some time away. Yeah, and I have partnerships established with different projects with different things. But yeah, I'm 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 a hundred percent independent right now. So yeah. And some of our listeners don't know this, but I'm gonna mention it that John was at one time, maybe still is, had an interest or affiliation with the S. Brian. For full disclosure here, I have to do that. Nowadays with all full disclosure. Uh John and I met actually at a company something called Web Summit in Lisbon, Portugal a couple of years ago. And uh, we started working together back then. That's how I—that's how we actually met. So uh, we're actually almost out of time here. So we're going to be wrapping up. We're very glad to have you on the show again. If you want to reach John, it's uh, go to Creativa K R E A T I V A I N C dot com. Go to contact us. Reach out to John. John's a very We'll always listen. We'll always get a, an explanation. We'll always help you out to whatever extent you can. You listen to KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM. Thank you very much.